25, Viscount, Manchester, 21. BA British Royal Vienna Wales, flight BE 635 to Glasgow. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now arrived at Manchester Airport, where the local time is 1.30. Minadama, Okara. We are new and length in Manchester City Plus, the Lucar Theatre. More than two million people now pass through the airport each year, flying direct to and from all principal European cities, as well as the North Atlantic routes to cities in Canada and the United States. The Duke of Edinburgh, opening the new terminal building in 1962, described the airport as the gateway to the world from the industrial heart of Britain. He wasn't kidding. The crowning glories of the new terminal are the four Venetian glass chandeliers, each one weighing two tons and containing 1,300 pieces of glass. And overlooking the apron is the memorial to Alcock and Brown, Manchester men who were first to fly the Atlantic non-stop. Nowadays, the girls on the information desk, fluent in five languages, speak to passengers about transatlantic flights as part of their everyday job. After all, flying the Atlantic is now as simple as sitting in an armchair. Up-to-date flight information is relayed throughout the airport in a dozen closed-circuit television screens. Here, you're amongst friends, friends who are interested in your comfort and safety. Don't let anyone tell you flying is dangerous. That idea went out with the days of those magnificent men and their flying machines. Everyone connected with any part of flying has to be an expert. There's just no room for the inexperienced. Some of these experts you never see, like the air traffic controllers. Although they may not be able to charm birds off the trees, they can talk planes clean out of the skies, like this. Four miles from touchdown. You're on the glide path. On the glide path again, heading 238. You are clear to land. The surface wind is calm. The runway visual range greater than 1,100 meters. Heading 238. You're on the glide path. You are clear to land. Turn left a further two degrees, heading 236. 236, your new heading. Wind check is calm. One mile from touchdown. You're on the center line. Glide path. Center line and glide path. Half a mile from touchdown. Approach complete. Out. Gulf Echo Delta. This is Manchester. And with the reassuring calm voice of the controller guiding the pilot to a safe touchdown, the talk-in is over. Air traffic control is run by the staff of the government's Department of Trade and Industry, and over a hundred experts keep a 24-hour watch on flight arrivals and departures. So they come and go, carrying uncles from Holland, sisters to the States, folks from Frankfurt, businessmen to Barbados, people Paris-wise, or simply happy holidaymakers packaging to Palma. One thing sure, two million people can't be wrong about Manchester Airport. One of the nice things about flying is you don't have to carry your baggage from point to point. It's unloaded from the plane onto trolleys, and you pick it up in time to tell the customs officer about the extra bottle of scotch that must have got there by mistake. Of course, Manchester Airport isn't solely concerned with passengers. Freight plays a very important role. In the last 10 years, the amount of cargo handled here has more than trebled. And by 1985, it's estimated that the airport will handle 400,000 tonnes of freight a year. That's 10 times as much as now. So many exporters and importers have found out that air freight is efficient, speedy, worldwide and very competitive in price. The direct service from Manchester can give a bonus of days and weeks on tight sales schedules. And there's just no limit to the type of cargo you can send. Anything from an egg to an engine, from a tulip to textile machinery. Ask the 20 carriers at Manchester Airport, they'll tell you. 
Before any plane is allowed to leave the ground, it must be fully inspected just to make sure that everything's all right. It usually is, but then it's nice to know that someone really cares. No sooner have you got off your plane than an engineer goes on and checks the entire aircraft systems and equipment. It's important that aircraft are refueled quickly, for airlines have a tight time schedule to keep. Here, fuel is pumped underground to each parking bay. A mobile pump then fills up the tanks at the rate of 4,000 gallons a minute. Just think of the trading stamps you get in that lot. Aircraft tanks are fed and so are passengers. Appetizing food in special containers is loaded on board for the longer flights. Of course, not all aircraft require the extensive ground services of the passenger airlines. This army helicopter just dropped in for a quick drink of fuel. But if all aircraft don't demand the same airport services, all make a certain amount of noise. And airport noise is a very delicate subject. No one is more conscious of the noise at Manchester Airport than the corporation. They're well aware of what people living nearby have to put up with. Noise limiting procedures are being progressively introduced. That's why grants will be made available to residents, so as they can have their homes soundproofed. We are concerned in the community's ecological health. We are interested in the community's economic wealth and airport links increase trade. Also, people in the area enjoy cheaper package deal holidays because you can fly direct from Manchester to all the popular resorts. But it's not only a one-way traffic. The number of foreign visitors flying into Manchester every year is growing at a fantastic rate. For we are the gateway to the north. Most of the residents whose homes surround Manchester Airport know most of these facts and appreciate the benefits to be derived from an international airport. For they're compensated in many ways. A high standard of local shops, a wide variety of imported goods and delicacies. Not to speak of the good standard of living enjoyed by those working in the aviation and ancillary industries. The region has always depended on strong communications, strengthened further today by our national and international air links. Throughout the day and night, planes come and go. At night, the airport becomes a glittering world of coloured lights and moving silhouettes. In the wee small hours, the airport dies a little. A stillness mantles the once thronged building like a giant struck down never to rise again. There's only a memory of excitement. Come the dawn, and with it, a new era. The age of the jumbo jet. The age of supersonic passenger travel. And Manchester's ready for it, as it always has been ready for every development. The main 0624 runway was extended to 9,200 feet to handle the largest passenger aircraft in the world and ensure that soon the Boeing 747 would be a regular caller at Manchester Airport. The first time you see a plane the height of a block of flats, it'll take your breath away. But when you're one of 400 passengers on board, it's like the old days of gracious sea travel, like sitting in the most comfortable cinema in the world. It's a new concept in air travel which is going to mean cheaper airfares. It's the future. No, this isn't a space city. This is the Manchester airport of the future, and the not too distant future at that. For in a couple of years' time, the eight million pound redevelopment scheme will make Ringway the most modern airport in Europe. And so, 40 years after deciding that aviation might have a future, as pioneers took to the air with not much more than a couple of wings, underpowered engines and a lot of hope, Manchester Corporation can be justifiably proud of its faith. A faith symbolized by Manchester's Golden Highway.